Right, for those of you watching both of my current series day to day, I've decided this series is going to be the one where I'm going to be happy and excited and positive. We're going to ignore the fact we've lost three games on the bounce. Everything is good here. We're positive. Yay, smiles from the neat and... Hello and welcome to part five of Backing the Borough. I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode, we're away against Telford and then at home against Bradford in the Conference North. Since you were last with me, we're trying to figure some stuff out is the best way to describe it. We had um, uh, three <laughs> three defeats on the bounce. Um, we did have a couple of wins though, which was nice. And the, I mean, the league situation... It's not a disaster. Um, our pre-season preview prediction thing has us in 17th place. Obviously, none eaten in real life are down in the relegation zone. For us to be in 12th place, not in any fear of relegation at the moment, I guess that's not an absolute disaster. The board, where's, where does board live on here? The board um, are pleased with my management of the team. And if we have a look at competition performance, their expectation is that we achieve mid-table. So we're doing all right. We don't need to panic. This is a long-term job here. But we're trying a different tactic because whatever we've been doing recently just hasn't been working. Now we've got Jordan Nicholson here for the rest of the season on loan. I think it's fair to start trying to build the system around him again. But I like this front three. I like Nicholson, Rocker and Chambers as front three. What I'm trying to figure out is what to do behind them. I've been persisting with wingers for most of the season and doing the 4-2-3-1. But Henschel and um, Akers, is it? And some of the other guys, Josh McDonald, they're not really pulling their weight. So we'll just drop them completely and go for a, a familiar looking 3 5 2. This is familiar to anybody who was around for my back in the, uh, not back in the bow, that's this one, the Bolt and Battle series that we did um, a couple of years ago now. Um, this was pretty much the system we used to take Bolton from the Conference North up to League One or the Championship. I forget which it was, but we did a 3-5-2 attacking with a man in behind the front two. Very similar to this, and it worked an absolute treat. Um, I do think we probably need to make El Becri a deep line. So we've got a little bit of a gap behind them where no one's really covering that area. But um, And we don't want Ashton covering, we want Jones covering. Um, I kind of... Would have liked to have Elliot in the midfield, maybe. But then we don't have a right wing back, so Elliot's going to have to play at right wing back. And, hmm, what can we make El Bekri? What's a Mazala? I don't know. I don't know what either of those are. Let me know down in the comments what they are. I'll figure them out eventually. But this is the team and the system we're going for today, anyway. We've got Hurst in goal because Dean Linus is injured. He's going to be out for a couple of weeks with a sprained wrist. Um, then we've got Ashton Jones and Gohagen as our back three with Mella and Elliot as wing backs, even though they're really both central midfield players, but they can play at wing back. This is the problem we're trying this system. We don't really have any wing backs. But, you know, we'll we have got a couple of other options, but I don't um, I don't think they're as good as those two. It's difficult. Mella, Matty Waters potentially is better at it, but mm, uh, um, and then again, Trotman may be a bit better at it, but there's not a lot in it. And I don't want to take Elliot out of the team completely. And then have got Salmons and Elbecri as our midfield. Salmons is our captain now, even though he's only on loan here. Um, we've let Calvin Langmead leave. Um, he's gone to, I mean, Merthyr Tidville are just taking all our players, but he's gone to Merthyr Tidville permanently, which I think you saw in the last episode. Um, so Salmons is now our captain. And we've got Nicholson in behind at Rocker and Chambers. So, we've tried to really go simple with just standard, flexible, with more direct passing. We'll adapt that as the game goes on, if I remember. But really, I just want to see some attacking threat from that front three without giving 20 chances to the opposition with hopefully a more solid back three in place. I am wondering, even now, if I should drop that back three back a little bit further because... Certainly, Ashton and Exodus are pretty slow. So we've got Jones in there to cover, which was the thinking behind doing it, because they were getting caught out by balls over the top. One option was drop the back line back, which some people suggested. I thought stick a quicker defender in between the two of them might be the solution. But I don't know. Do we drop them back as well and go belt and braces? What I don't like is the fact we're 25 minutes into the game we've not had a shot yet. I don't want this tactical tweak to completely nullify us going forward. But Rocker wins the ball back, being the defensive forward that he's supposed to be, wins the ball back, has a little bit of a shot, and we do get our first shot. Still neither team has had a shot on target. 
but where are Telford in the league? Is that something I need to be worried about? Telford are top of the league. Okay, in that case, forget all that not having a shot nonsense. We just don't want to concede. If we manage to not lose, if we manage to not get stuffed today, we're going to be over the moon with this new system. Right, Salmons makes the tackle. Knocking the ball around nicely. Go Hagen over the top. Chambers trying to chase. <gasps> Ashley Chambers got there because he was on a slide tackle and didn't have to shoot. He didn't miss. And we've gone 1-0 up against top of the table Telford. Thanks to a lumping ball over the top from one of our three centre-backs and our quick poacher just absolutely chasing and throwing himself at something he had no right to win. He's done brilliantly there and it is 1-0 to Nani and that pushes us back up to 10th place in the league. Still only four points outside of the playoffs if things end as they are, but let's not try to get too far ahead of ourselves. We are still away from home at the top of the league team and we have the most leaky defence in the universe So, and we don't have our goalkeeper. So I'm not confident we're going to have an absolute shutout. But as of right now, this new system has had a successful first half. And that is a real novelty for me in FM18 in the Conference North. Um, can, I'm now thinking, is there a way to transpose this over to Alfredton in my other save? I really don't think there is. I don't think we've got the players to do it. But, oh, it's nice to see a system that even for a little while appears to be working. And Rock is in to make it two and really should have done. That's quite a big miss from is it Elliot Rocker. Um, Chambers played him through nicely after being fed by Nicholson. And it's the first we've really seen a Nicholson in the whole game. He's been the one slight issue. We see, Because we're playing quite direct and we've not got much of a midfield, we seem to be ignoring that Jordan Nicholson exists completely, which I guess isn't a massive long-term problem because he is still only here on loan. But if we're not going to use him, we might as well add a third player into that midfield and just take him out of the team completely which is a consideration going forward. Maybe even do, I don't know, have Nicholson... No, we don't want Nicholson behind just Chambers. We need Rocker in the team as well, just to be a bit of a nuisance. We've got to have a partner for Chambers. We've learnt that much this year. In fact, what we've learnt this year is Chambers only scores goals when he's part of a front three, alongside someone who's going to do his dirty work for him and Nicholson who's going to provide him chances. So don't mess with the front three at all, Kev. And Hurst did really well there. Because Telford were in, and that's probably the best chance of the game so far. But Hurst makes a save. We've got to be a little bit careful from this corner, especially because I don't think I've added set piece instructions for this new system yet. So we're potentially going to be a little bit all over the place. Chambers, that's a terrible pass, but Rocker's alive to it. And there are players ahead of him. Salmons is there. Elbecri, Nicholson's run forward, but that's a poor pass from Elbecri. And it's time to make a few changes. We're going to take Rocker off and bring on Jonathan Nixon to go up front he can't be a defensive forward though what does he want to be he can be a deep lying forward I mean he's not great at that either what can Chambers do again no, not really any of that um, let's go to the proper tactic screen what else can we tweak we've got Trotman who can come on for uh, in fact we've got two fullbacks who can go on Waters can come on for Mella who's not having the best of games and I think we might take off we'll take off Elliot and throw on Trotman it gives us the option, if we nab a second goal somehow, it gives us the option to go to a flat back five if I want to be a complete monster. Do I want to go that way around? No. Or do I? I'm letting non-lead to legend influence me now. I know that Jonathan Nixon is a bit of a poacher. Oh, Exodus, what are you for? Oh, was that another good save from Hurst? He is keeping us in this game. Exodus just had an absolute howler. But we've got away with it. And I am wondering if, with 15 minutes to go, should I swap the front two around to try and get Nixon into poaching positions? Or if we just won a penalty? We've won a penalty. You might be about to see, for the first time ever on YouTube, Kev doing a flat back five. If we convert this penalty, that's exactly what we're going to do. And it is Elbecri to take. Can he convert it? Is the flat back five going to become a reality? Elbecri scores. Tactic screen. Hello there. Right, Waters, back, Trotman, back. Um, I don't know that I want you to be on attacking, little fella. Just be support, that's fine. And should we drop Nicholson back as well? No, we shan't do that. We'll just leave everything else as it is, except we'll make him defensive. And we're going to go counter-attacking. I mean, this might be the stupidest thing I've ever done. We found a system that works, so I'm now messing it up by tweaking it. But... I just feel like away from home against the best team in the league, we're 2-0 up. 
we've got to at least try and protect that. Got to give some semblance of trying to do tactics. And, oh no, it's all going wrong. And now I'm thinking, do I go back to what we know worked from a minute ago? Or do we continue trying to be grown-ups about it? If, we'd have, if we hadn't scored and they hadn't scored, we wouldn't have changed the system. So I, the world is screaming at me, go back to what we were doing before. So let's go back to what we were doing before. I can't bring myself to stay as we would just were. It just doesn't sit well with me at all. So you're going to go back to support. We're not good enough to close out a game. Let's go back to this. Is that everything exactly as it was? I think so. But now they've got momentum and we've just got tactical fiddling again. And I've bet, I, oh, have I just thrown the game away? No, don't be negative, Kev. We'll be fine. There you go. Jones comes across to cover. That's what he's in the team to do. Trotman, now the chance to get a little bit of a break on. And Nicholson plays Chambers in and controls it really poorly. And they've now got a break on us. But we have got all three of our defenders back. Trotman's trying to chase back as well. They've hit the post and... Jones in to cover again. That's twice we've seen him doing his job, getting in there and almost playing as a bit of a sweeper for us in between the two lumbering old men either side of him. Oh, right. Ashton lumps it clear. That's exactly what we want him to be doing. And we've got eight seconds left. Please don't mess it up from here, lads. This is going to be a massive, massive result if we can just hold on. And come on now. And have we... No, not with the last kick of the game. That must be it. So it's a goal kick. Referee, keep the whistle in your mouth. You're going to need it. It is all over. Yes, there we go. We've beaten the top of the table team away from home. We might just have finally, finally found a tactic that works. A couple of tweaks then for the Bradford game because I just can't help myself. Heaton comes into the back four at the expense of Ashton who drops down to the bench. Just a little bit more youth and exuberance back there. Linus comes back in in goal. He's still injured-ish, but better than Hurst. Well, Hurst had a decent game in the last game. He drops down to the bench. We don't normally have a sub-keeper, but with Linus being injured, it seems silly not to. Chambers has also picked up a little bit of a knock. He's got a bruised shoulder, but will still play. And we bring Waters in at left-back at the expense of Mella, who I've dropped out of the squad entirely, which seems a little bit harsh. But, yeah, what are you going to do? Um, we've got Bezrick who could play left wing back if he absolutely needed him to. So we'll stick with that for now. We are going on a control mentality as well. Bradford Park Avenue are in the relegation zone. We're the home team. We've just beaten the top of the league team. It feels like the kind of match where we should be starting on a control mentality. John Ashton, my esteemed assistant manager, seems to agree with me. So we'll, we're going to go control and we're going to take it from there. We're going to be keeping an eye on Linus and Chambers as well because... Nicholson aside, they're probably our two best players. We are taking a little bit of a risk playing them when they're carrying knocks. But because they're two of our most important players, when they're available to play, I feel like we have to play them. And they're not so injured they can't play at all. So let's get them in the team and hopefully uh, rinse a performance out of them so that we can pick up back-to-back -back wins for the first time in forever and start to move up this league table a little bit again, which would be absolutely marvellous. Right, Elliot lumps it forward to Chambers, who doesn't win the header, but Salmons does pick it up in midfield and gives Chambers something to chase. And this is better. Chambers has got the chance to cross to Rocker, and he does, and Rocker makes it 1-0 with 15 minutes on the clock. And Chambers did that all right for a man who's carrying an injury. I know it's only a bruised shoulder, which doesn't really stop you sprinting down the right wing and putting a crossover, but all the same... He did a good job and Rocco with a very tidy little finish. That's why he's here to score goals just like that one. And that moves us up to, I think, 10th place, just outside of the playoffs on points. Maybe one or two points outside of the playoffs. One point outside of the playoffs as things stand right now. And with a real opportunity to push on as we move through into this second half of the season. Oh, I hope this tactic works long term and it's not going to be another one of these. It looks like it's going to work and then it all falls apart. What was Salmons doing there? A silly little back heel in the centre of our midfield almost cost us a goal. If we'd have conceded the goal there, I'd have ripped the captaincy off him and sent him back to wherever he's on loan from. Just as punishment for being an absolute moron. Does better there though. Nicholson finds Chambers and Waters is overlapping on this left-hand side. And Rocker's in again. Grabs his second. It's 2-0. Elliot Rocker. I think that might be like his 8th or ninth goal since joining us on loan. Probably December time. So he's come in and made quite an impact. Chambers very heavily involved again and we're actually starting to see our wing back do what wing backs are supposed to do. Waters gets forward, gets the crossover and... 
it, I tell you what, I said we're going to be positive on this series. We've actually got reasons to be positive on this series. This all seems to be going quite well at the moment. Chambers, again, challenging for an aerial ball. We've got to start kicking it towards Rocker, who's a man who can win it in the air, rather than Chambers. There you go, there's Rocker winning it in the air. Flicks onto Chambers, who gives it back to Rocker. Nicholson is right next to you. There you go, and doesn't really... Oh, I say he doesn't do anything with it. Actual fact, he does something completely magical with it. He had a little bit of luck. I think he sort of kicked it into the opposition player, and it fell nicely for him. We'll get, have another look at it here. But once he got it back... He pay oh there you go. In fact, it's a little pretty little trick, and it's a beautiful through ball for Ashley Chambers, who's having a storming couple of games. Chambers has new lease of life playing as part of this front three. He's getting chances, he's creating chances, and we're three 0 up after twenty five minutes of a football match. Bradford haven't even had a shot yet. And we all of a sudden look like a completely different team to what we did two games ago, even. Oh, what a difference stumbling across a tactic that seems like it might work makes. Exodus, what's he got? Hopefully a big ball forward. There it is. Chambers can chase. And the keeper's come a long way out there. And Elliot picks it up. The keeper's potentially still out of position. I don't know why I'm looking for an overhead view like we were playing FIFA. But now um, Bradford play the ball over the top of our very static back line there. And... It's just like going back in time. It's a ball over the top. Our defenders were were quite far forward, out of position. They're almost on the halfway line there. I do think maybe we do need to drop them back because they are so slow. But are we then potentially going to completely isolate our midfield? We're only really operating on a two-man midfield. If we drop our centre-backs back, I don't know. It just feels like a bad idea. It's not the defensive line is something I rarely fiddle with, but so many of our goals come from balls over the top like that. And Chambers gets in again. Has he won a penalty? He has won a penalty, and it's going to be Rocker to take to complete his hat trick. And four one up after thirty five minutes, that will do very nicely. Can Rocker grab his hat trick? He can. Oh, look at that! He's a very happy boy. So happy he just managed to merge with the referee for a moment there which is probably how he got the penalty in the first place. That's a really confident penalty. Look, are we going to see him disappear into the ref? No, we're not. But 4-1 up now. As we approach half-time, forget the defensive line. Let's do this Kev style. We're not going to worry about if we concede goals. If we continue scoring goals at the rate we're scoring them in this game, it doesn't matter if we concede goals because we'll just outscore any team that comes up against us. Cue a 6-6 draw today, everybody. We've just about written that in the stars now. Jones lumps clear. Chambers again is on the ball. And Nicholson's very far forward. But lovely ball to Rocker. And Nicholson and Chambers are both in the area. And he can't find either of them. But Elliot is up, joining in with the attack from right wing back. And doesn't... I mean, he didn't really know what to do with it. Considering Elliot's been quite an important player from central midfield all season... You'd expect him to have more of an idea what he's supposed to be doing from that kind of position than apparently he did. Stick a number two on his back and he starts playing like a right back, which is a little bit of a worry. Right. That first half couldn't have gone much better than it has. We now need to, extra specially with bells on, keep an eye on the fitness of Linus and Chambers because we're closing in on job done on this match. We don't want to risk picking up injuries now. Heaton hits the post. El Becri crosses to Nicholson, who really should have done better with that. We could have been 5-1 up. And at that point, Ashley Chambers for sure would be coming off. And I think I'd be very tempted to take off Linus as well. We've got Hurst on the bench. I guess for this eventuality. Although really is there if Linus couldn't see out the full game. But, you know, there's we brought we brought them in to win the game. We've pretty much done that at this point. Should we just take them both off? I don't think I've ever voluntarily subbed a goalkeeper before. Hopefully that's not going to destroy his confidence. Nixon's going to come on for Chambers. And then for my final trick, I will bring Trotman on for Elliot. Because I'm still not sure who's going to be our right wing back. Trotman can play there and Elliot hasn't really impressed. And there's probably an opportunity to get him back into the team in the centre of midfield. Uh, or at least provide some competi competition for places there. And if Trotman looks more like a wing-back, just like Waters has in this game, he's done a better job than Mella did in the last one, then maybe Trotman, there you go, look, he did some defending. If he shows me some attacking as well, he's pretty much nailing himself a start on for the next match. All right, Hurst lumps forward. Trotman, he's going to show me some attacking. It's like he's listening. Squares the ball to Sammons, who... Didn't really do anything with it at all. And we are caught by a ball over the top again. 
And it's cost us two goals, and I think I am going to take that defensive line back a little bit. If there's ever going to be a game to experiment, it's going to be this one, where we're playing against a team that we're better than. We're only going to go slightly deeper, but we just need to try and snuff out these balls over the top. And if we cut out that, then this tactic suddenly looks a bit special. Rocker squares it to Nicholson. He's got time and space to have a shot, but instead elects to just faff about with it. And we've, I mean, we're caught out of position. The one good thing is Trotman's there covering. We didn't seem to have everybody forward, even though they were forward for a corner. So perhaps that's the defensive line thing in action. But, oh my goodness me, I'm so glad I did the whole speech about it doesn't matter if we're conceding goals. With five minutes to go, there's now only one goal in it and we've taken off our goalkeeper and we're fiddling with the defence. This could be about to be the eggiest of egg on face situation I've had for like at least a day. And that's saying something. Oh, please don't concede another goal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, Trotman with the throw finds Albeckri. Let's just grab a fifth. Let's make this a proper Kev match. Why have we not got a left back? Is that Waters chasing back now? It's not. Where on earth is he? But Heaton is there to cover. The whole defensive line, rather than defending on the halfway line, are defending, are defending halfway between the halfway line and the penalty area. And we're able to nip that out. And Nixon does grab the fifth. So I wonder, was that was that all about me? Did I, did I make that happen? Look at where the defensive line is this time compared to all their goals. We're defending much further back. And it allowed us to just restart the attack. And Nixon showing that he is a goal scorer. And probably deserves a little bit more game time. But not right on the halfway line again. This is good. 5-3 against the bottom of the table team. We are a weird team who don't know what consistency means. But more important than any of that is our current league position. If we have a look at the league table... Um, after 28 games, so we have another 14 games left to go, we're in t 11th place, which doesn't sound all that, but importantly, only three points behind FC United, who are in the playoffs, and we play them next. So, a late playoff push this season is not out of the question, especially if we can continue in this run of form that this tweak to the tactic seems to have created. We've had some high-scoring games recently, wowzers. Right, if you've enjoyed that, please make sure you pop a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for brand new Football Manager content at 4pm and 9pm every single day. And thank you very much for watching.